On this week's episode of Whitetail Cribs, we're headed to Wisconsin to visit with Carl Bethke. Carl shows us a log cabin that he built, some amazing mounts, and you even get to check out an indoor archery range. Let's go. Hey guys, come on in. I'm Carl Bethke. Welcome to my house. hunting for probably about 30 years now and uh, I own a small company called Rush Outdoors you guys check that out on YouTube we do a little little hunting for educational stuff and show people what we do 80 to 180 inches we think they're all trophies to the people that take them I'm gonna show you guys around my house here show you some of the mounts that I've got and some of the some of the things I've done over the last 30 years I like the I designed the house to have big open spaces this is the kitchen area I'm gonna talk I'm gonna grab a shed here I want to talk about quick so this is a shed. This buck is actually a buck we call Double Fork. Uh, this was his six year shed. He was six years old when we found this. This is actually the first shed my wife ever found. She thought we planted it. So <laughs> it was right in the middle of a trail. We were all walking around through the woods and uh, she comes walking along. She's like, hey, here's one. And <laughs> we all freaked out. We come running up to her and like, oh my God, that's Double Fork. She's like, you guys planted this. I'm like, no way. I said, if I'd have found that, you wouldn't have touched it. <laughs> so let's head on down. We're gonna head down to my basement quick. Some of these, these prints, these are all Michael Sieve prints. And I had gotten these about 20 years ago and uh, kind of rules to live by. So if you actually look at the prints themselves, they actually named like this is find a refuge. This is actually where I do all my fun stuff. So this is my basement. I could shoot 17 yards in here. Got a bunch of whitetails, caribou in here, a Hawaiian ram, Corsican, Asian goat. Um, and you can see, obviously, there is uh, equipment and things on the wall here. So my real job, I'm a mechanical engineer. I work for Seiko Foods. Uh, basically, we're a packaging company. I used to work for Kraft Oscar Meyer for 25 years. And uh, I'm going to start with my number one deer, first deer I ever shot. This is actually my first whitetail ever. Uh, shot him with a bow, a uh, Pearson Striker back in the day, which was back then the speed bow, and it was like 240, 45 feet per second, something like that. I actually shot that deer, and he took off running, and I didn't know any better, so I took off running after him and uh, caught up to him and ended up having to put another arrow into him. I didn't. He'd have been dead right there, but I didn't know any better. So This buck here is actually the second year I was ever hunting. This is actually a gun kill, and this, this mount was done by myself and Steve Wolliver, uh, one of my best friends. Uh, Steve actually taught me how to do taxidermy. So some of the taxidermy you're gonna see, well, all the taxidermy you're gonna see except two of the mounts are done by myself. Some of it's good, some of it's bad. As I got older, it progressed and got better and better. I shot him in the snow uh, with a rifle. He went about 25 yards and I had to drag him out of a, a ravine that was about like that. I was younger then, so it was pretty easy, but we got that done. Uh, this particular buck here, was 2006. I shot him with a bow at 45 yards. He was on a doe. He's a nice, well, I call him a 10 pointer. That one probably isn't 10, but he's got kickers and stuff on him. Uh, that deer dressed 208 pounds. That was a pretty good body deer. This particular buck is a nice 10 pointer that I had shot uh, on a property I had a ways away from here uh, on the other side of town. It was a metro property. So we do hunt, I do hunt quite a bit of metro area and I, there's a spot where I call a kill corridor and it's basically a hillside that I use for structure. And I've got food plots set up. It's easy in, easy out. So you're not educating your deer and you can get in and out really quickly. This buck right here is another 10 pointer from down in uh, the Barneveld area. Shot that deer with a bow, would have been 2004. And he was, we had a lot of CWD in the state, so we would get a lot of buck tags. If we shoot those, we would earn a buck tag back at the time. We ended up taking a lot of different bucks over those years, and you guys are gonna hear about those as we progress through here. Then we're gonna get to some of my mule deer here. I do a lot of hunting in North Dakota. Um, my North Dakota mule deer uh, started 25 years ago. This buck here, I shot him 2000, 
15, and I believe that's the one I shot. He was 102 yards when I shot him, and we've got that on film for the show. I know a lot of people don't think that that's an ethical shot, but I spend a ton of time shooting my equipment and tuning my equipment to make it capable to shoot a three or four inch group at 100 yards. And if I have the right opportunity, I will take that shot. So I'm sure there'll be some controversy on that statement, but this one here is a story. This is actually the first mule deer I ever shot in North Dakota. It was 35 below zero, and we had a 40 mile an hour wind. And I had seen some bucks coming into these hay bales. So basically, the cold temperatures are gonna come and feed into the hay bales. So we made a ground blind in the bales. And I came in, sat in the ground blind. I had a doe not four yards, five yards away from me. And at that point, I then wasn't sure if I was gonna be able to make the shot or not. And all of a sudden this buck steps out. We had three or four probably minutes of shooting light. It was still fairly decent because of snow on the ground, but I, I think there was only three or four minutes of shooting light left. And I was shooting a Hoyt at that time. I had a Hoyt Magnatech and I drew the bow back and it just went crink, 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 crink <laughs> when it went to full draw. I put the pin on him, squeezed off and absolutely smoked him. He went off running and uh, fell over dead right right actually in the in the cow pasture where we were and the guy I was hunting with was actually coming down the road in his truck you seen the deer fall over and I took off running right at him and it was like a huge celebration I actually jumped like from 10 feet away from him Mark caught me in the air and I was like it was awesome just a dude's a great big hug that was the first mule deer I ever shot so pretty cool this buck right here is the largest body deer I had ever shot. Rack wise, he's not gonna score a lot, but he's the largest body deer I had ever shot. He dressed out 247 pounds. Shot here at the house, right across the street on that kill cord that I talked to you guys about. Uh, that was Halloween on the film, on the shot. Well, I thought I had filmed it. That's how this works. So self filming, pulled back, came to 20 yards. I'm looking at viewfinder, yep, perfect, I shoot. Arrow goes right through him. You can see blood just pumping out both sides of him. He's standing there at 20 yards. I'm watching him through the camera. I'm like, this is perfect. And then he walks away after like 30 seconds. And there's blood coming out both sides. And it kind of goes down in this deep ravine. And I'm like, I can't see him anymore. And then I heard kind of a crash. And I'm like, oh my God, he's down, you know. And I look at the camera and I forgot to hit record. Perfect, right? So my wife and I ended up going and getting that deer and it took both of us to get him in the little trailer for our ATV to get him to go. But that was kind of a, that was a cool story and a, and a really big buck. That deer, like I said, was eight and a half years old. This particular buck was another little bit of a story. I was actually building my home and uh, we were trying to get everything done. My wife was pregnant with my son and we we're trying to get everything so we can move in here and now it's the beginning of November. My brother-in-law told me I needed to relax. So he sent me back to his place to go hunting. So I went out about noon and got back in there. It's, you know, like I said, early November and I'm coming out a little bit early cause it's dark, you know, the cloudy and shaded and we're walking up, I'm coming up this kind of hillside. And I look to my left and this buck is skirting me about 80 yards away, coming up to the top. And I figure, well, once he gets to the cornfield, either he's gonna come towards me or he's gonna go away from me. And my luck, he turned, came towards me, walked by me at like 15 yards on my knees, put the shot on him, he ran 20 yards. And that's the end of the story there. Now caribou, this is from Quebec, this buck, or this buck, this, this caribou is from Northern Quebec. We were hunting with Safari Nordique, a buddy of mine actually had set the hunt up and his wife ended up having complications with their pregnancy. And he asked me two weeks before they were supposed to go if I could go in his place. This is the first one I did shoot this one with a rifle. I don't even remember how far away it was, but we took rifle and I took my bow and this is the first caribou I shot. So that particular day, because I was the youngest guy in camp, I got to hike four caribou out on my back. Thanks to the guide. He said, well, you're the young guy. We're going to let you carry everybody else's stuff out. So that's about what I got going down here. Bows, equipment, things that I do that. Some of my little bows, some of the things I collect, I collect uh, recurves and I collect long bows. I do shoot them, but I don't think I'm good enough to uh, actually hunt with them yet. So we'll head up and see what we got now. So now this is my office. This is where I do all the rush outdoors work. This is my computer where I do all the editing and stuff for our videos. We did CDs back in the day. We had a TV show called The Whitetail Obsession. You can see on the Hunt channel. Um, but now we do most of our stuff is on YouTube. So you can check that out at Rush Outdoors Wisconsin if you want. We're gonna talk about a few of the bucks that I got in here. So this buck here I called Nightmare. 
He was driving me crazy. I had a bunch of pictures of him, and just when I think I had him tagged down to where I could actually go and hunt him, he'd switch up position, like by a half mile switch up position. So now that I'm older, I realize I was probably educating him on either my entrance or my exit. But back then, I didn't really have a clue. <laughs> so I actually ended up shooting that deer, would have been October 29th, and a half mile from where I was actually hunting him before, hence the name Nightmare. <laughs> He was a big pain for me to get on, and I finally did. Uh, there was a cold front coming in, and there was probably a 45 mile an hour wind. I was on the on the downhill side of this, like I said, the kill cord of this hillside structure. And he came in from the west, kind of sneaking across the top, gave me a 28 yard shot. And I shot him, and I thought I heard him go down, but the tree was swaying a lot, and I thought I made a really good shot, but I didn't see him go down. So not knowing, I just backed out. My wife and I actually came in the next morning and he was laying about 15 yards from where I had shot him. And uh, of course I was ecstatic at that point. There's the picture up there. He is 200 and I think 214 pounds this buck dressed. A lot of the deer here in the, this area where I'm hunting in my metro area, they're, you know, like I said, metro bucks. So there's a little bit of advantage to hunting them uh, and their sizes. You can, definitely let the deer get a little bit bigger because there's not a lot of hunting pressure in the area. This one here, that was in the south central part of the state uh, on family property. Uh, another good eight pointer. Um, it was October 29th. And I don't even remember what year. I want to say 2016, I believe. And I had let a couple smaller two and a half year olds go by. That deer, I believe, is three years old. And uh, he ended up coming by at 47 yards and I put the shot on him and he went 60 yards and fell over dead. This buck here, I had two pictures of this particular deer. I had a food plot that I had set up kind of on the hillside. My thoughts at that particular time were if I got pictures of really good deer, I'm gonna pull my camera. If he's got his face in the camera, he knows it's there. I uh, got pictures of him, two of them, one with his nose right in the camera, one with his head turned and walking away at night. And I pulled the camera. Fifth day of bow season, which that would have been about two weeks before bow season. The fifth day of bow season, I had that deer come in on a cold front. He ended up coming in and I ended up taking him out with about a 27 yard shot. He went 50 yards, fell over dead. And I still think he's probably my highest scoring whitetail. I don't spend a lot of time, I'll be honest with you guys, scoring my deer. If I get excited, I'm gonna shoot him. It's that simple. Shot some pretty good bucks as you can see, but I really, don't have a huge number for you guys to give you exact scores on all my deer. This is a mule deer from North Dakota. This muley, uh, I do know what this muley grossed because one of my friends that Mark Meyer I told you about told me that I had to have him scored. You can see he's missing a brow tine. So he grosses 180 some inches, I believe. And he nets in the 170s, okay, when he's all done. This buck here is a pretty good story. I had, uh, it was early November that year. We were actually hunting like the second week of November out there in North Dakota. And he had 11 does with him. He had separated down to one. And I had followed him the entire time. The doe ended up seeing me. She's like 63 yards. And she's standing there kind of quartering at me. And he's right behind her another 20 yards, I think, something like that. Ended up being an 89 yard shot when I shot him. He bedded right down. I sat there, you know, that took four hours for him to separate his does. I sat there for another two and then thought about it. I'm like, well, I've been making this shot all year practicing it. I'm like, just go ahead and make your shot. Waited for the wind to die down and pulled the bow back, put the pin on him. At the time I was shooting a Matthews Legacy. Put the pin on him, just held right on his front shoulder because he was kind of quartering at me. I let the shot go. Arrow went in right here, took out his left lung, the top of the heart and the right lung deer went 20 yards and uh, fell over dead. And I'll be honest, I uh, cried on the hill <laughs> for a while. That's the, uh, probably one of the pinnacles of my, my uh, archery career, shooting that deer. So that was a, that was a pretty cool experience. This buck here, this is a two year story, this deer here. So in 2015, 15, 20, sorry, 2013, Mike Stadler and I were actually uh, doing a show they called Battle of the Bow. <clears throat> and I had this buck come in. We were across near my house here again. And I had this buck come in, kind of quartering at me at 22, 23 yards. And I put an arrow in him 
and when I when I put the arrow in them, you can hear them on the video. It goes Rawr! like a real throaty grunt, like growl thing. And uh, I put an arrow in them, hit a little bit high. I hit them plenty high, and he took off running. Well, I never did find that deer. Okay, found the blood trail, called in a dog, it tracked him and everything. And we never did end up getting the deer. Very next year, I had zero pictures of him. Okay, now it's 2015, and I start getting pictures of this buck. I call him Double Crab Claw. You can see he's got crab claws on both sides, real heavy. It's the first week of November. I'm hunting in the same tree that I shot him out of two years ago. And a doe comes into the plot, and he's right behind her. I put a 42-yard shot on him and killed him. So when I'm actually skinning him out, I just find this. I find a bump on his spine. And that year I was shooting Thunderheads. And I was shooting, actually at that time, was a Carbon Express 300. So I start doing some investigating, pull this out, realize, hey, I think that's my broadhead. Do some investigating with pictures and video. Ends up, I shoot the same buck that I shot two years ago out of the same stand, except 25, 30 yards to my right. That's a pretty cool story. That was that deer was well over 230 pounds. I think it was 242. This particular deer right here was actually last year. So I purchased 72 acres. My son graduated college and dad bought hunting land for his graduation present. He was he was ecstatic because then he gets to come and hunt it too. So but anyway, this particular deer, I had a few pictures of him. He's heavy, not very wide, but a really nice buck. And like I said, I had just gotten the property. It was September 27th here in southern Wisconsin. That deer came in 20 yards. I was going to shoot a doe. I spun around to kind of just check everything out, make sure it was clear. And here he's standing opposite side, coming up the field edge, right along the one of my brassica plots. I'm like, that's a heavy buck. I'm going to shoot him. So he come in, put the shot on me. He went 20 yards, falls over on camera. I was ecstatic, had my buddy Mike filming in another plot with me. It was a good night. But uh, that deer there, he, he was a little bit body wise. I think he's three years old and he was probably 175 pounds dressed, 180 maybe. And like I said, it was early September 27th. That particular buck was my first one on my property. So kind of excited about that, just mounted him up. Caribou, like I said, caribou is from uh, Northern Quebec. Same hunt as the other one. Uh, that particular caribou, I shot him at 67 yards with the bow. He went 30 yards and fell over dead. Uh, that particular day, it was hot. So it was like 57 degrees and the black flies are so bad that you're, I'm basically wearing a whole face net over my face. And it looks like my face is moving because there's so many black flies on me. It's just absolutely ridiculous. So when he, when he ended up dying, he died next to this, this kind of cold water creek. So we ended up basically cutting him, quartering him and everything. The sun was going down. We skinned him, cut him, quarter him, basically put him in the bags and we put him in the creek because we weren't going to be able to get him to the, get him to the boat in time. Uh, according to, we had to be at a certain place at a certain time, according to the guides. So that's what we did. And, and we went back the next day and got all the meat and the hide and everything. And uh, that's, how, that's how I got this guy. This buck here is kind of special. Uh, this was 2004. I was actually hunting with Chad Bauman from Rocky Mountain Broadheads, had them up here. And uh, I went to another place where I didn't think I was going to see deer and this buck ended up coming in. He's actually got broken tines you can't really see. He's got another broken drop tine that had broken down off of this side. There's tines that came out the back side, broken tines on that side. He's still got 13 points. That deer dressed out uh, just 200 plus pounds again, just another giant buck and uh, again the kill corridor. This elk was shot southwest Colorado. Uh, I was actually filming for Summit Tree Stands High Places TV show. I was a videographer then for them for quite a few years on their staff, working with uh, Keith Jones and the Wallers. And uh, we were on one of their properties. They invited us up for an elk hunt. This is my first and my only elk right now. Don't do a ton of elk hunting, have done a few, but this is my only successful one. Shot him out of a tree stand, uh, which was kind of cool. The cows came down through, um, gave me a 53 yard shot. I shot him broadside. He ran 40 yards right in front of my buddy, Dave. Dave went to full draw. He was gonna shoot him cause he thought I missed and they fell over dead in Dave's scope. <laughs> and I got a call on the radio, hey, nice shot. Congratulations, <laughs> da 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 da. So that's how that elk hunt ended up going. And uh, there was a six by six that came in after him, which was pretty cool. Bugling right below the stand. I had never heard elk bugle. Sounds like a dinosaur at that time. You know, I was just freaked out. I thought that was awesome. And then this particular buck here, 
This buck is actually a buck I called Sweeper. There's a bunch of pictures of him. I got him on my screensaver. But this is deer I started to get pictures here. This is actually off my land also. So when we get the CWD tag, then it gives me a chance to shoot another buck here in Wisconsin. And this is the buck I shot October 27th here in Southern Wisconsin. And that deer um, was home body on my property. I will probably not shoot a buck this age group again. This is probably a three year old deer, I believe. And uh, fortunate enough, bought a piece of property in a really good spot and hopefully we'll be able to shoot some older age class deer this year. We'll see what happens. We'll head back out here, a couple of my real prized possessions. These are two of my favorite mounts. I actually had, these are professionally done. I had somebody else do these, I did not do these. Uh, this is a black bear from here in Wisconsin. Uh, he was 400 pounds, 397 pounds he was. And that's my first black bear ever. I had gone up to the Drummond area and hunted with one of my brother-in-law's friends. She, she was a warden for years and uh, she, she's she got a really nice place up there. And I, I hunted with her and she had a bunch of bait she had set out and the first, First hunt, I didn't see a bear, hunted 15 hours straight, never seen a bear. Then the next day I got up, hunted six hours, never seen a bear. Came back to the, to the house, Jill and I had a discussion, seen a couple pictures. I said, I'd like to hunt here near the swamp. She said, you go right ahead. Took me out there, I sat there, and this bear ended up coming through. Uh, shot him at 20 yards, he ran 20 yards and fell over dead on camera. So uh, he's actually, his skull was an eighth inch under Boone and Crockett. I know that because the taxidermist scored it and had to let me know, otherwise I wouldn't have even checked. But uh, that's a great bear. Then this muley, this muley I shot in 2019. Uh, we went out to North Dakota again where we always go out. Uh, same four guys, we always go together. And this particular deer, uh, I shot the evening of the first evening. Uh, we were hunting in two separate groups. I shot this buck and it was only, it was a 47 yard shot and he went 30 yards and fell over dead. We also found these sheds, which are kind of cool. I got the matching set. Uh, they were actually found, Mike found one and I found the other and they were about a mile apart, but all on the same property. So that's kind of a cool thing.